Hello everybody, this is another Brucey Magic video and today we'll be reviewing the Caledonia Works Raven A2 model. So, a quick brief introduction, as you can see I've laid out the locos here, there are a couple of gaps there uh, and I'll explain uh, why it's laid out as it is in a second. Um, Basically, this is a class of five locos designed by Raven for the Northeastern Railway. I keep pressing the wrong buttons again because I keep playing Morrowind. Um, and uh, they were basically a stretched out version of the C7 class Atlantic. Uh, there's plenty of resource material available on the internet for people who want a brief description of these locos, including lner.info. Uh, and your usual sources of Wikipedia and other such associated websites. So these locos were originally ordered to be built by Raven uh, about 1922, literally in the months before grouping. Um, there was a need for the Northeastern to have a Pacific type loco that had better power and acceleration which would allow them to haul larger and longer trains, heavier services at a bit more of an up-tone pace. Uh, the interesting thing is, around the same time, Gresley was developing his A1s for the Great Northern as well. So you'll find that 2400 was actually built and outshopped when the line drawings all publicised and everything to try and attract some attention at the same time that the first A1 got put out onto the rails. Uh, basically, these are uh, these are basically massive chunks. Um, I mean, just look at it. It's a brute. It really is a brute. Um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a decent size loco. Uh, plenty of gumption. Uh, oops, sorry. Plenty of gumption, plenty of guts, plenty of power. Obviously, there was a lot of these uh, that were, I believe they were dual fitted. Yes. Uh, now, there were VAC only, and then I believe there was also some... My history on these locos is a bit patchy. Um out of the five of them, I think at some point they were all fitted with air and vac, but there was obviously, there was obviously one or two that maybe just a vac only. Uh, so for a subgroup of only, well, for a group of only five locos, we get a lot of variants in this pack. So we'll basically take you for a quick run through the deliveries, but before that, I'll explain something. Um, now I did approach Chris on this topic, uh, and when, when you get your head around it, it makes sense. But basically. Uh, if you buy this, you, your mind might be a bit bamboozled by the fact you've got six tenders, uh, which are three Gresley and... Th oh, sorry, no, seven tenders, four Gresley and three Ravens um, for this model. And basically, the tenders used to interchange on these locos a lot. Uh, so all of them, at some point in their careers, carried Gresley and Raven tenders. Uh, as per usual, with lots of large companies, they often change the tenders around as per necessary. Um, so that's why I've only put a limited number down, because there's any number of combinations that you could actually conjure up um, with this pack. Uh, it really is open to imagination or, or whatever historical detail you can find out about workings these locos did. So anyway, we'll start off with a quick look at the liveries and then we'll get into the nitty gritty detail of the actual models themselves. Cab views will come later on in the review. So taking a look around the liveries in my usual fashion, I really ought to turn on my graphic settings at some point. Um, we can see that Chris has gone all out again. Uh, I didn't really pick the best sunlight for this, but uh, I have got the uh, reshader on, so it should make a bit of a difference. As usual, uh, the paintwork is to Chris's highest standards. Uh, we'll zoom right in again. Lining is very crisp. On the smaller wheels, it seems to be a little fuzzier when we zoom right in, but that's still good. That's absolutely fine. Uh, the driving wheels are lined, including uh, where the mouse is around the uh, axle join onto the wheel. Uh, all the lining around the steps, the lining again everywhere uh, as typical for locos of this period uh, but the lining is as sharp as ever, boiler bands sharp as ever uh, the crest again, uh, Chris has outdone himself on the crest it's actually really high detail um, I don't know where on earth he gets them from but 
Jesus, the decals on this are, are, are fantastic. Uh, as usual, we've got the standard sort of mucky brass or the brass colour for fittings as well, which is really nice and to a T as per usual. Handrails are all nice and shiny um, and well worn. Uh, moving on to the rest of the lining again and visual detail, more decal details as usual. Very, very nice, crisp and clean. Uh, moving on to builder's plates, uh, we can see here this is the standard usual uh, Caledonia Works practice where it's a raised plate, raised rivets, raised numbers, obviously a photo texture for the actual details there, uh, which is not too bad. Um, lots of detail on this loco there is inside motion on it which i believe you can just about see if you get the right camera angle um there's not a lot really to say about valve gear because there's not a lot on the outside uh, but yeah details are all there nice neat and tidy including sandpipes uh the springs underneath obviously the brake rodding uh etc etc and moving on to the tender uh, as much of a muchness uh, with this one. Same standards as usual that Chris has always employed with leaf springs on tenders and these slight sort of open type frames. Uh, very highly detailed for what it is. Moving around, obviously, we can see that on this particular variant, we've laid down a dual brake version, which is air brake on the left and on the right, to the, just to the right of it, is the thicker vacuum pipe. Uh, we've obviously got a steam heating pipe down below as well, uh, as these were express passenger locomotives. Looking at the front of the loco, uh, we've got the little wheel and dart on the front of the smoke box door and the nice chromium around the edge of it, as well as the hinges. Looks to a T, really does. Uh, to the top, obviously, you can see that we've got a short chimney, which has got a lip on it. Uh, around it which is quite a nice touch uh, also going along it's just it, 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 there's not a lot I can really say it's just to a really high standard to be honest uh, it's a very simple design Pacific uh, we'll put it that way so design features wise as in the actual loco uh, there's not a lot really to point out but Chris has obviously done it a lot a lot of justice uh, cold texture as usual is bang on uh, it's Chris's usual cold texture and works very well so uh, we've got the Westinghouse as well there, I think, or is it a steam reverser? Could be a Westinghouse because obviously it's air brakes. I can't remember the bloody difference anyway. Um, but anyway, we've got Northeastern livery there. Uh, we've got pre-1928 LNER livery with LNER on the tender and 2401 on the tender as well. Uh, this example will be in named city of Kingston upon Hull. Uh, obviously, all five names have been faithfully reproduced for the pack. And this is post-1928 um, livery. I'm trying to figure out if this is a vac-only one that I might have put down. Uh, no, it's dual brake as well. Uh, but I did put down a vac-only one. This is post-1928 livery, which, as you can see, exactly the same high-quality decals that Chris has always used for these liveries. Tender lining sharp as ever. Uh, so yeah, no crest on that one. Uh, this is post-1928 vacuum-only uh, livery. Vacuum-only livery. Uh, post-1928 livery vacuum-only with a Gresley tender. Uh, obviously, over the career of the lives of these locos, even though they didn't last till BR, uh, they did carry Gresley tenders at times, as for the aforementioned reasons as to wise and where fours moving over again uh, this is a dual braked version I believe no that's the vac only I stand corrected I'm an idiot uh, post 1928 livery which is very nice with the grizzly tender I think some of them are pre 1928 livery as well there are some minor differences uh, but not an awful lot uh, so yeah, the L and the R and NER liveries are pretty much uh, much of a muchness really. They were the stock liveries that these engines carried. They only ever carried Express Green. Uh, moving on, Chris also included three fictional liveries, which look very nice indeed. We've got a wartime black, uh, which is 
oops, as, as it says, I do apologise for the jerky camera movement. I've got a new mouse, uh, so I'm still getting used to the higher dots per inch. Um, obviously, again, decals to a good high level. The reshader really does pick out the bump maps quite well on everything. City of York, and it looks nice in wartime black. I'm not going to lie, it really does. Shame I never saw the livery, uh, because they really do look nice in it. Uh, obviously, the three fictional liveries he's done with Gresley Tenders. Uh, Chris has also done an ultramarine blue, which is my favourite of the three fictional skins. It just pops. It really does. It it looks absolutely amazing with the gill sands lettering on the rear of the tender, uh, the usual coal. It it just yeah, that looks really nice, and it does make you think, why the hell didn't they last longer? Uh, we've also got the slightly more tame. BR Express Blue, which I think suits the Loco very well as well. Um, again, another livery which I wish this Loco did see in its operational life. So, now we've done all of that and we've had a brief overview, we will start by setting up a quick drive with one of the formations that is included. Uh, I'll take you through some more details and we'll go for a little drive and sample the cab and sounds. Right, hello everyone. Right, we're now back on the Cambridge. I'll say that again. The Cambridge Shear Lines route, uh, which incorporates part of the East Coast Main Line between Kings Cross and Peterborough. The route is set in the 1950s, but uh, for the purpose of this review, I thought this would be a good route to try out the loco. And as you can see, uh, we're going to be hauling some of the new Matrix trains. Pullman carriages, uh, which came out not long before this loco did, so it'll be a, a good opportune chance to have something nice going along the East Coast Main Line. So, we'll just uh, unpause. I'll just click on the loco, we'll get our cab up and everything. Right then, we're okay. So we just need to build up the fire anyway, but I'll quickly show you around the cab because this is the next part of the review that we need to do. Uh, obviously, while we're firing coal, it, everything lights up lovely. Chris has um, made a lot of things very featureable. Uh, the fact that you can get the hatch up to a fair level to get some ventilation is pretty damn awesome, I'm not going to lie. Uh, the windows on the cab do move have found it can be a little bit stubborn to um, grab and behave. You have to grab the frame rather than the whole window. Uh, other developers have managed to do it where you can click anywhere on the window and slide it open. So if you want it fully open you have to give it a few efforts at least uh, depending on your mouse settings or the dots per inch you've got. So it, it is possible. Um, again, the textures in the cab are to a T, we're using the Gresley Tender on this occasion. Um, absolutely fine, absolutely fine, whoops a daisy, hang on a sec, there we go, uh, let me just get my dots per inch up, there we go, that's better. Uh, this one does open, it's a bit of a, there we go, you have to grab the other edge you see, on this side of the cab, it's a bit of a faff, but uh, not impossible, which is very good. Uh, all the controls look very nice. It's at the same usual standard, bit of dirt spec. Point to the white paintwork. We just uh, turn the coal off for a second. You can see, this is how it naturally looks, which isn't too shabby. So we'll open up the fire again. We'll just go to oops, lazy. Oh, I've done that thing where I go the wrong way on these uh, cab views. Now you see, it doesn't go down to the fire level now anymore, which is, uh, I find a bit of a shame. It was nice to look at that. Um, but yeah, standard cab views as per the last few models, including the 8K and the 9N. And as usual, we have a Bible, uh, which is very nice, usual touch of Chris. So, excuse me. Um, Basically, we'll just run through the lamps as well before we get on to sounds. Um, still building the fire. 
So lamps are control one, two, three, four, again as per usual. Uh, if you, yeah, that's right. It's the same as all of Chris's models. Uh, where if you want a red lamp, a singular red lamp, uh, you can have it just by going control and pressing two twice or three twice even. So we're express passenger. So we'll get those two lamps up there. And what I have noticed is, is observation saloon. Right, there's no brake pipe on. I put Devon Bell on it, I don't know why, but I thought, yeah, let's just have it. Uh, if you press the headlight button on the HUD or the H button, you will bring up the tail lamp that corresponds on the um, coaching stock that you're hauling as well, which is very useful. So this one's 2402 in LNER built condition with a Gresley tender. So uh, we'll depart shortly, so we'll just quickly make sure that dampers are well and truly on because we will need them uh, so we'll have a quick listen to the various whistles and then we'll set off uh, listen to some of the sounds to see how this thing performs so on the spacebar key got like a, I don't know how to describe it, a very shrill kind of like the A3's which is standard loop whistle And then as usual, or maybe not on this one. Okay, it seems that there's only two whistles on this one at two pitches. We haven't got the assortment of recordings. Uh, I think that's mainly because of we need an NAR whistle, stuff like that. Yeah, you know, the limitations of trying to record the real thing, I think, because most of you can understand we're going to have a bit of a problem with that. Uh, but anyway, right, so this is how I typically drive the loco myself. Uh, so what you'll see is how I drive. The cut-off, the, the cylinder cocks entering and cutting off sound is, is done perfectly again as per usual. Let's get a barking. Oh. Well, that didn't go very well, did it? Um, hmm. Yeah. Right. Now that we've finally sorted out points that are a fast, and we've got the fire back up to where we want it to, we can now continue driving. So, back where we left off, obviously the cylinder cocks you've now heard sound very nice. Safety valve is going off, ten to the dozen. And it doesn't sound too bad, a little bit looped, but that's to be expected. see if we derail this time. I'm pretty sure we won't because I've actually managed to alter which platform the trunk that we went out on. But, uh, is that a duff signal? Ah! It's approach control. I like to keep it uh, upon Chris's advice of keeping the fire at 70% for prolonged flat out running. <laughs> 
Um, little and often seems to be the best cause. set the route to Peachbury which is 76 miles, it's obviously going to be a bit long of a drive but uh, probably go to Hitchin or somewhere like that for the time being, we'll see how we get on. Just give her a tiny bit of front water, ease it through, there we go. This uh, one in 107, and uh, I'll stick some power down. We'll see how we go. Hopefully, we'll get to hear some of the chuck loops, which is my main aim uh, throughout this particular part of the review. I am not kidding you guys, this has been one of the most frustrating reviews I have ever filmed because Railworks is being really, really stupid. Right, so, for those that don't realise what happened, I had a temp dump as I approached the second set of tunnels after King's Cross. Um, which meant for some reason, something was crashing train seeming the route or trains were being stupid or there's too many assets so yeah anyway we'll just set off and just pray and hope for the bloody best I'm getting sick of restarting So, we'll get her up to speed. And we'll hopefully hear the sound loops changing as we go along, which is what the main aim of this is. We'll also see how fast we can get. Let's get to my favourite view. There we go. Wow. 
Um, just back that off a little bit. As you can tell by the tone and the pitch and the chuffs, uh, we haven't changed the boots of grain to some kind of intermediary uh, sounding boot. Hear the blend of the truck loops there. Safety valves come on. Uh, it is reported that actually these locos normally did get a. Uh, there's mixed reports on them. Uh, there were some that said these were actually kind of bad performance, but uh, once a few tweaks have been done to the clamps, actually, they were pretty free steaming. Hitting about 68, which was actually pretty decent. We'll, we'll see how the revolution is doing in a second. Uh, we'll just get through here.
Okay. There we go. Just hope it doesn't get cold. I'll just go to two view. Um, sorry about the frame rate being very smooth. There we go. And you can see these wheels going around like an absolute torrent. Obviously, the very simple valve gear makes a hell of a difference to the appearance of this loco in trains. Uh, but this is essentially a stretched C7 Atlantic design, which has to be borne in mind. Uh, and it's very simple. Outside simple. So the speed keeps rising. We're doing well, we're getting 70 out of it. These were reported to do about 80 or 90 miles an hour, so um, take a little bit of skill getting it there. But we're on a steady 1 in 200. I dare say we could probably get a little more out of it um, if we were on the complete and not a total flat. Let's try and get this all the way up. I'm going to try and get this all the way up to about 80 and see how it goes. Just approaching Hadley Wood now, which is a bit weird because it's sandwiched between two sets of tunnels, which is a bit odd. Now we've got a 70 speed limit going on, but uh, we'll keep, keep going for a little bit. In mind, we've got load 8. I think we've got 8, we've got 9. It's either 8 or 9, I mean, that's not that going. Ah. Oops, I'm accidentally driving. I'll well, ignore that we've got that. some extensive long and flat sections which would have made a hell of a difference to the performance of this loco. And then as it turns out, I think it might be levelling out. down a little bit as well, so that's not too bad.
see if we can get Route 280. Two more miles an hour, I'm sure we can do it. Basically, in essence, the Loco is very solid performer. Uh, it's a very nice model. Uh, it's of a class that we never would have thought of at the time as being something that Chris may want to do. Uh, I think that's because it's a bit more out of the blue, this one. But my god, it does look nice. That wasn't a bad run. 16 minutes in the end from uh, things to be part of where we got, which isn't bad going. Um, yeah, that's that's really not that bad. Uh, so yes, all in all, uh, a very nice view. It's basically, uh, I'd recommend people buying it. It's of a class that was only small, uh, five members. But historically, it's of interest to people who have an interest in the LNER and pre-grouping uh, constituent companies because this was, well, the first one was basically built, drawn up and everything at the same time as previously stated as the Gresley A1s, which they're in direct competition with. Um, but yeah, nice model all around. Sound-wise, um, I think Chris has had slightly better but overall the sounds aren't disappointing they're very good they're of good quality for the type of loco that it is it's very difficult to try and 
find suitable sounds for it. These would have sounded very, very unique compared to other Pacifics. All in all, I think this is a fantastic purchase. Uh, and it's now currently for sale uh, on the Caledonia Works website, which I'll link in the description below. So anyway, thank you very much for watching this Brucey Magic video. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. Um, yeah, until next time, uh, hopefully it'll be a review of something modern image, or it might even be, if it comes out, uh, the Dean Goods by Digital Traction. I forgot the name of the class then as I went to say it. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this Brucey Magic production. I hope you like, subscribe, and also leave a comment. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are. Thank you very much, and see you again soon.